God bless you. Family, King Jesus bless you. Guys, thanks for tuning in. So we got a three-day countdown here till the beginning of Feast of Trumpets. Uh, these feast days were all super purposeful, very specific in their timing, and all of them completely about Jesus. In Leviticus 23, in the Old Testament, many years before Jesus Messiah even came to this earth, uh, these feasts given by Abba God to uh, God's people, and all talking about Jesus. The first four feasts, talking about King Jesus as suffering servant. He fulfilled it perfectly. The next three, talking about conquering king, starting with Feast of Trumpets. King Jesus will fulfill those things perfectly at the Moadim, the appointed time. The Lord is not going to be late. He's not going to be early. And he's telling us when these things are. This is fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah, so with the feast days, let's just break that down quick. So the, the first feast, of course, Passover, um, fulfilled by King Jesus in his crucifixion. Uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, talking about King Jesus in his death and burial. Uh, first Fruits, fulfilled by Jesus in his resurrection. And the Feast of Weeks, fulfilled by King Jesus in Pentecost. 50 days later, Holy Spirit coming down, boom, church age being begun. Um, so, and then our next three, of course, we have, starting with Feast of Trumpets, and a high time, high, high opportunity, and just, um, just anticipation. Lord Jesus, could this be? It, it was just the Moadim for, for the catching away. Um, and then Feast of Atonement, which will be the uh, second coming of King Jesus and atoning for uh, the sins, redeeming the, the Jews who come through tribulation and the tribulation saints. And then Feast of Tabernacles, talking about that kingdom age, that millennial kingdom. Moadim, the, the whole picture of salvation. Specificity, right? That King Jesus wanted to know such things. Um, before I get into a few scriptures on just more about this appointed times <clears throat> and, um, and these feast days, it makes me also think, you know, when the trumpet blasts at the last trump, at, um, at our catching away, at the rapture, it makes me think, and I've heard people talk about this in the past, um, will it be something that, that the whole world will hear? And um, John 10 verse 27 talking about how the sheep, us as the sheep of Christ, him being our shepherd, like the sheep hear his voice. <clears throat> so could it be like when that trumpet from heaven comes, like we hear it um, and we understand it. But the world, I mean, I don't know, are they going to hear? I, I sense almost like they're not of the sheepfold, so it's almost like they might hear something, but but it might be undiscernible type of thing. Um, makes me think of when Saul was on his road to Damascus, converted to Paul. Um, I I think the the company that was with him, they either just saw the bright light, but didn't hear something. It was something like that. Like it was it was understood differently. Saul he both saw the bright light and he heard the voice of Jesus. I think they did not hear nothing. They just saw like the light, uh, the bright light. So anyways, it just makes me think of that. Like, praise God that we have the Holy Spirit, that we know the voice of King Jesus. So when you think when these things happen, it doesn't come upon us like a thief. We're like, oh, wow, that, that's the voice of the shepherd. We know that voice. And that trumpet blast, you know, it's a voice like a trumpet speaking. <clears throat> so this is fantastic. Um, also, uh, just talking again about that last, at the last trump. Uh, talking about that Feast of Trumpets, but also, you know, Donald Trump running for his his next term. Not the first Trump in his four years, but the last Trump. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about that. I thought, I feel like I've thought of that um, by the Holy Spirit years ago before I heard anybody saying that. I was telling people, and they're saying, that's crazy. And I'm like, I perceived, I'm like, uh, the Lord could be winking in different ways. Just so many different, uh, different things here. Um, also, I think of Luke 21, talking about the end times, um, nations in distress, and also something like the waves roaring. And I think of Hurricane Helene that just ripped through um, the waves roaring. So many things, just Lord winking and saying, this is kind of how the culture and the world is going to look in those last days. <clears throat> and uh, 2 Timothy 4, also for those who love the appearing of Jesus, you're going to get that crown of righteousness. Paul writing to Timothy, he's saying, not just me, because he's like, I'm, I'm loving it, I can't wait, 
but he's saying, and also to all of those who love is appearing. So you guys and me, we're getting crowns of righteousness. How cool. I don't know what that's going to look like exactly. I like to wear a lot of hats and a crown is like a hat. And when we think of crowns, we kind of probably think of like that old school King James type golden thing with little points or like the Burger King things. Uh, who knows exactly how it's going to look, but uh, we don't deserve any of it. But King Jesus, it is his good pleasure to give it to us. And I'll take it and we'll give it right back to him. <laughs> okay, Lord, I love you. Thank you. Here you go. All right, what I wanted to talk about a couple of scriptures, talking about these feast days and just the, these moedims, these appointed times, and how all these seven feasts, they all point to King Jesus. Starting with Colossians 2, 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, right? So this time on these feast days, he's saying don't let anybody judge you in regards to these, verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So these feast days, right back in Leviticus 23, before King Jesus came in a humble way through woman and was born, all these things pointing to Jesus, uh, they were a shadow of things to come, of Messiah to come, the whole point of the Bible, of life. You gotta know Jesus. A shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ, right? The first four feasts fulfilled by Jesus as suffering servant, Messiah, for the sins of the world. The last three feast days in the fall, starting with Feast of Trumpets, will be as conquering king, Jesus, on the rescue mission, getting us out of here, coming back on Day of Atonement to uh, receive remnant Israel and tribulation saints at his second coming, us with him, presenting the bride, us, and then the, um, the tabernacles, Christ with us, millennial kingdom, kingdom, age for a thousand years or a day to the Lord. Okay, so how cool that we read this in Colossians 2, talking about these feast days. And no one can judge us according to these feast days or new moons or anything. But the point of them is a shadow and it's pointing to Christ, okay? Let's never forget these Moedims. It's all about uh Jesus, right? It sounds so simple. It's like, really? All the feasts are about Jesus? So what? Well, so what a big deal <laughs> because the first four were for salvation. Uh, the Lord did not come that first time to judge, but to save many. He'll come that second time to judge. Um, that's why we must know Jesus, right? Uh, Daniel 8 verse 19. Daniel, right? A very strong prophetic book about end times. So in Daniel eight nineteen here, Okay, he says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. So again, there's so much in these last days talking about feast days, appointed times, the end times. You know, not just that it'll be kind of in a certain vicinity of time, but there is a proper appointed time for everything. <clears throat> and I just think of it as I speak from another book of Ecclesiastes. If Holy Spirit's moving any of you guys similarly, uh, you know where I might be going here. Yeah, here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, <clears throat> and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, etc., etc. Um, there we go, right? So, man, there there is specificity to such things in life when they were you know railing against Jesus when he was preaching and healing and even doing these things on the Sabbath and they didn't like it according to their customs but they didn't understand the spirit behind it they didn't understand the law and the prophets pointing to Jesus and behold here he was they weren't getting it how frustrating they would try to kill him they would try to throw him off a cliff they would try to stone him and he slipped away in their midst I would read that I'm like what and as I grew in my faith you know, I was like, you know, he could have supernaturally did something where all of a sudden, like, you know, the crowd is coming up big and, 
like getting hands on him and stuff, then all of a sudden they're like, you know, he just disappears. He could do that. Like when he was on the mountain and he told his disciples, go ahead, and they were a certain distance on the boat. And then all of a sudden he came and met on the water and then got on the boat. And immediately that boat was to the shore, even though it was only a certain distance, like in the middle of the, the water. But there is a, an appointed time for everything. We have a birth date, a month, a day, and a year. And the Lord knew it, and the Lord ordained it to be as such. Uh, we're not dying, but if we were to die, there would be an appointed day that we die. But we're that terminal generation, so there's an appointed time that we shall be raptured. A Moadim, an appointed time, not a, a dart at the dartboard around there. It's specific, and especially with the Feast of Trumpets, two days. October 2nd through the 4th, the new moon has a signal to it. At the last trump, a hundred blasts are blast, and the last one is held long. <clears throat> and that's the, the illusion uh, that they were alluding to in, in Scripture. At the last trump, um, no man knows the day or the hour. King Jesus just straight winking at us, saying, I'm telling you without telling you. I'm telling you in a different way. I'm coming for you to rapture you before the wrath before the covenant is confirmed, the peace treaty by Antichrist for seven years, before Antichrist is revealed, right before the Second Thessalonians 2, deception, where, let's read that really quick. I just feel in my spirit, that's coming up too. <clears throat> and for those left behind, they're gonna have to know this. And if you happen to see this video, perhaps this will guide you. So in second, yeah, oops, sorry, first Thessalonians, that won't work. So here we go, <laughs> second Thessalonians 2. All right. Um, it is so great, all of this stuff, where should I begin? How about, okay, so verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Holy Spirit will let or restrain the wickedness until Holy Spirit is taken away. Holy Spirit presence in each believer, in the church. Church began in a day. It's going to end in a day, in a moment. And uh, that's when we'll be taken out just as quickly as church began. Verse 8, and then, right? So it's showing order here. Moadim, right? There's an order for everything. The Lord is not of disorder and confusion. He is of order. Christ is of God. We are of Christ and Christ is of God. There's this order, Scripture tells us. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth. Right? King Jesus said, I am the truth, that they might be saved. They missed it. And for this cause, God shall, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. <clears throat> so that deception is uh, coming. People need to be ready. And that also makes me think of additional scriptures. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so talking about, guys, let me wrap up with this. How, you know, during uh, during the tribulation and in the book of Revelation, um, the Lord is sovereign and he is behind all these things, right? Even the wickedness that the Antichrist will do, that the dragon, Satan will do, um, the Lord is sovereign. These devils are, you know, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the, the devil himself, our dogs on leashes and therefore a purpose. Uh, Revelation 17, 7, For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. So this one world order thing that is coming, you know, it's not like, oh, Satan is uh, getting all, you know, is uh, his plan and plot is coming to fruition, unfortunately. It's like, no, this is of the Lord. Uh, to fulfill his purpose, um, God has put it into their hearts. So the Lord is sovereign. He, he's in charge of all this. And, uh, and that's exceedingly comforting. So 
I think that's all that I have, guys. So again, just to close these seven feasts, all about King Jesus as suffering servant to begin, and they're going to they're gonna end with him as, um, as a conquering king. Two different images, but all these feasts, all these appointed times, they are purposeful, and they were just a shadow, uh, Colossians tells us, when they were given of a thing to come of Christ Jesus. They're all about Jesus, his first coming, his second coming, we got to put rapture in there with it as well because church needs to be removed before that second coming thing happens and then the millennial kingdom reign for a thousand years. I uh, hope this gives some clarity in terms of just the point, the, the whole point of these feasts and how it's all about Jesus and how rapture is in there as well so we can just zero in on that timetable and just be ready and be excited and be like that bridegroom who, you know, she's probably doing what she's doing, but every night or every time when the grooms tend to come she'll be looking and that's us too we're, we're going to do that with these appointed times we're going to look hard all right guys thank you for watching my video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and please share this video and oh man i'm gonna see you guys soon but we're going home soon god bless you